The adorable Nintendo character known as Kirby sucks. It's kind of his whole thing. What defines the little pink dude is his ability to inhale so hard that enemies are forced into his gaping maw. But what if you were his enemy? Could Kirby inhale a person? I've loved Kirby ever since Kirby's Dream Land, and my friends have hated Kirby ever since I became that guy who mains Kirby in Super Smash Bros. Yeah, I stand by it. That floating down B? Yeah, I don't care that I spam it. I do spam it. Anyway, having played with Kirby for the last 20 years, I jumped at Timp89's question. But I want to reorient it a bit for sucking up people, because if Timp doesn't want to spell words correctly, I can do whatever I want. I'm sure you know what I'm doing right now. But do you really know what happens when you inhale? When you're inhaling, your diaphragm pulls downwards while your chest cavity pulls outwards. This creates a difference in pressure, just slightly less than atmospheric pressure at a difference of 0.02 psi. But that's fine because air is compelled to move from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Think of it this way. Here's a balloon filled with normal air. That air is exerting a pressure on the inside of the balloon as air molecules bump into the sides at hundreds of meters per second, creating a force over an area, PSI, pounds per square inch, or pascals, newtons per meter squared. Now, if the air outside has the same pressure, then nothing happens. But if the forces are unequal, then the balloon will expand because the inside pressure is greater than the outside pressure. This is air being compelled to move from an area of high pressure to low pressure, but the balloon gets in the way until the difference gets so high that the balloon pops. So, oh, we killed him. Now back to your poorly drawn lungs. When you inhale, the area that the air molecules have to press on inside of your lungs increases, thereby lowering the force per unit area or pressure. Now the pressure outside of your body is greater than the pressure inside of your lungs, and so air forces its way in. <sighs> oh, I got Kirby disease. Pressure differentials explain how vacuum cleaners work and how drinking straws work and how Kirby inhales enemies. But is that differential large enough to suck up a human? Ow! God, is that how that feels? Okay, so how big is a Kirby breath? That relates to his change in volume. If you draw it poorly, Nintendo can't sue. Kirby is small, according to Nintendo, only 20 centimeters Tall. He's kind of like a basketball with feet. But if he's going to inhale a person, I'm going to assume he needs to increase his diameter to at least average human height. So let's say he increases to 162 centimeters. Oh man. Oh man, there are, there are a lot of dead Captain Falcons in here. According to Boyle's law, in a closed system, volume and pressure are inversely related. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So. If Kirby has normal air in his mouth at 15 PSI or atmospheric pressure, and his body is around 0.004 cubic meters, when he increases to people eating size at 2.2 cubic meters, then the pressure inside of his mouth would drop to just 0.03 PSI, or less than atmospheric pressure on Mars. This pressure differential is so big, in fact, that it creates a special case in fluid dynamics called choked flow. Choked flow occurs when the ratio between inside and outside pressure is so great that air is forced through an orifice, like Kirby's mouth in this example, at its speed limit, the speed of sound, which means that a human-sized Kirby inhale will be moving air into his mouth at 1,200 and 25 kilometers an hour. This is in fact the same kind of flow that would happen if you blew a hole in a spaceship. And in the movies, we've seen people get sucked across the room and into the abyss. But would you be sucked into Kirby's pink abyss? Oh, nope. That depends. When choked flow occurs, the highest velocity is more or less inside the hole where the air is flowing into at the choke plane. Now, if you were outside of this choke plane, you wouldn't feel much. This is where the movies get explosive decompression and pressure differentials wrong. 
Imagine you were underneath the surface of the ocean and then someone opens up a drain at the bottom of the ocean. Would you expect that you'd be pulled all the way from the surface down through the drain? No. You'd have to be close enough to that drain near the choke plane such that there is enough mass flowing into it at a sufficient velocity to force you through the hole. As happened to a crab on the bottom of a seafloor uh, encountering a low pressure pipe, a, a break in a low pressure pipe, and uh, this is not for the squeamish, so I warned you. I warned you. Here you go. Oh man. Poor Krabby. Knowing all that, let's answer our question. What if you were right at Kirby's mouth, right where the choke plane is? Consider a plug of air or a cylinder of air the size of Kirby's mouth, maybe a meter wide, moving at the speed of sound into his body. If you were hit by this plug of air, then you would be hit with the same energy that a car moving at highway speeds has. So unless you did this to get out of the way of the choke plane, you might do this. So could Kirby vacuum up a human being? Yes, I think so, but you'd have to be very, very close to the choke plane forming on the inside of his mouth due to the pressure differentials. This distance requirement at least does fit with what we see in the games. You have to move Kirby almost close enough to touch an enemy to force them into his mouth with nothing but air. And unfortunately, it fits with examples of decompression that we found on airplanes where people are ripped through holes in airplane fuselages, but not the people sitting on just the other side of the aisle. It turns out that Kirby really does suck. Because science. <laughs> nice noob. Gotta spam it. Gotta spam that down B. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes like the idea that created this episode or on Instagram under the same handle where I'm now posting mini episodes of the show like I did right now. Check it out. You'd think that when you do this, you're changing a lot of volume inside of your body, but you're not. The pressure differential between atmospheric pressure and the pressure inside of your lungs is very, very, very small. This is why when you're at a rock concert or near a car with insane and too expensive and stupid speakers, that if the bass gets heavy enough, the decibels, the, it's a measure of pressure. The pressure waves from that sound can start, have you ever felt that, forcing air in and out of your lungs, like <laughs> in time with the beat? That's because the pressure waves of, the, of that sound is higher than the pressure inside of your lungs because there's not a lot of pressure differential and it forces air in and out. It can almost breathe for you. Pimp my lungs.